is ready to praise the Lord this morning. Let's all stand this morning. Woo! Woo! I want to see you move this morning.
As we were worshiping, I saw light around Matthew, and all of a sudden, as we would keep on worshiping, the light came to every of these people on the stage and over this whole auditorium. And God said, In that moment, He's got our kids and He's got us. Can you lift your hands to the stage so that we pray for that? That God has our children, God has us, even in this climate that we have, God has us, amen. Let's pray for that. God, we thank you right now, Lord. You've got the whole world in your hands, Lord. We honor you. We worship you. Your name be lifted up, Lord. Thank you that you carry our children. You've got the youth, Lord. You've got our children, Lord. And you've got us, Lord. No economic calamity, no load shedding, no COVID can take us out because you have got us. Give God a hand of prayer. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Woo! That was awesome. Good morning, saints. Can you give a band a hand for that awesome worship? Give your friend a hug and, and then we can be seated. Welcome to the people online. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Just as we quiet down, as we prepare for communion, I've got the scripture now. If you are children of God, we are heirs, heirs of God and co heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. His suffering relates to persecution. Yes, even to the cross. But His glory was through sin. We are apart, but now post the crucifixion. Hallelujah. Post the crucifixion, we are brought together because His suffering has brought us together. I see His body broken as a symbol of that suffering. And I see the blood as the power that unlocks His glory in our lives. We should have been dead because all who have sinned and the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And because of that one perfect lamb that was slain, remember the Passover, the angel of death could not get to the Israelites. And so today the perfect lamb has died for us and opened up community with God. The veil was torn and we have communion. So we come to this table of mercy this morning and we remember. During his last supper, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And then before giving it to the disciples, he said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup of wine, blessed it and gave it to his disciples saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. His body was broken, bruised, but by his stripes, amen, we are healed. His blood was poured out, but though our sin was like crimson, it shall be as snow, and though they may be red like crimson, yes, they shall be as wool. And today, there are three parts in our communion as we get ready for that. God's sacrifice, we remember. His body that was broken. His blood that was spilled 
so that we can have eternal life and be set free. But after that, He washed the feet of His disciples, which brought us cleansing. The highest sacrifice, the things that slave did despise to do, Jesus did for His disciples. So in this moment, as we're getting ready, can you just bring your heart before God? Lord, as you wash the feet of the disciples, wash me now. Cleanse me, Lord. So I can freely partake of this, Father, the highest precept ever in, in Christianity. This communion, this community with you, Lord. Whatever may have bring some separation, Lord. We bring our lives before you, our sins, our thoughts. And you free us, Father. You set us free and you cleanse us in Jesus' name. As the band softly ministers that song, the blood, get around your friends, get around your family, and let's take part of this beautiful, beautiful precept. And be blessed as God does amazing things and continue to do awesome things in your life. Amen. Can I pray for us? Father, as we take part of your communion, just strengthen our bond with you, Lord. Strengthen our unity with you and with each other. And bless this beautiful moment in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen.
합니다 할렐루야 We worship you Lord We honor you mighty God Thank you Jesus Thank you so much For your blood Your brokenness O Lord God That made us whole And we are so honored O Lord God To be able to come and Lord just Bow down and worship you Lord Jesus Thank you so much Good morning church Good morning my brothers, my sisters to, your, to those online, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a privilege for us to gather in such a manner. What a privilege, you know, to come unto the house of the Lord. We are indeed privileged. So many long to be here. So many can't be here. And on that note, I want to give you, th- I want to just thank you for coming out, you know, to come and have fellowship with us today. So a very special welcome to you. Um, by show of hands, can we just uh, acknowledge our first time visitors? If you've been um, coming here, it's your very first time, never been uh, to a retreat, can we see a hand? Nobody? Oh, I've got a hand. Young man, welcome, sir. Welcome. It is good to have you and to welcome you. There's another hand right at the back, ma'am. I see that hand. Please feel welcome. Um, we would like to, the assistants are going to give you a welcome pack. Please complete it. They will also ask for, for it or return for it later before the service is done. And then we also want to welcome you to our visitors' lounge right at the back. Come and uh, enjoy a cup of coffee and, you know, something sweet. And we just like to know you. We want to tell you about, uh, you know, every nation retreat, how we love God, how we love people, and just who we are. So please come and join us later on. All right. Life celebrations, you know, something that we are big on at this house, this family. Um, I know we've had plenty of uh, birthday celebrations. Um, Frida, I know she's here. Um, uh, Deirdre, I know Deirdre. We celebrated Marion's birthday yesterday. God is just awesome. Um, Carusa Young, Carusa Gannison. Right. Can I ask that you? Oh, and of course, uh, Ricky, please, sir, won't you just stand? Those individuals, won't you stand? Thank you, Deirdre. Uh, Frida, won't you stand? Um, Anyone? You've had a birthday? Yes, uh, Patrick. Um, Oh, today. Oh, awesome. Happy birthday to you. Special round of applause for Patrick. Did we have any anniversaries during the past week or even today? Any birthday? Couple, Trevor, I see you there, sir. There's the the young lady at the back. Is that an anniversary, ma'am? Oh, uh, birthday. All right. Um, uh, Caroline birthday i can't is that the couple are you selling your anniversary oh awesome man awesome let's just let's just stretch our hands out you know let's just ask god's blessing on them for the next 365 father we just so honor the lord god to be able to come before you and lift these brothers and sisters of ours oh lord god we pray a special blessing over their lives oh lord god father lord that lord that they can't even contain oh lord god father lord the next 365 oh lord god just be with them bless him oh lord god their comings their goings oh lord god in the name of jesus father lord for the for shirley and kurt celebrating the anniversary oh lord Lord God, we pray, O oh Lord God, that you would just be a God that draw near, Lord God. Lord, as they look to you, as they trust you, Lord God, for better things, O oh Lord God. Lord, as they, Lord God, in the union, O oh Lord God, in the marriage, O oh Lord God, just raise their kids in the fear of the Lord. Bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a few uh, uh, prayer requests, and it is my privilege to just commit this to God. And I want you to please, you know, just join me as we unite our faith. We've got several requests. Uh, there's a, a couple in our church that's trusting God um, for their own home. They've now tired of renting. It's been year in, year out. They've been renting a place, and they're looking and trusting God for a home of their own. And we're going to just unite our faith and trust God for this re- uh, request. We've got several requests here for employment. Some wants to change it, uh, their current employment, and we'll trust that God will lead them, that that particular job will come to them in Jesus' mighty name. And so let us just unite our hearts. Heavenly Father, we just bring these requests to Lord God. We were encouraged this morning by the speaker when he says, you've got the whole world in your hand, O Lord God. And Father, Lord, reassure these individuals, these recipients, O Lord God, that their gifts are on the way, O Lord God. Father, Lord, reassure them, O Lord God, that Lord, as they trust, as they put their trust in you, that you will, O Lord God, honor their prayer requests, O Lord God. That home, O Lord God, not a house, O Lord God, that home, O Lord 
Lord God. I speak it into existence in the name of Jesus, O Lord God. For employment, O Lord God. Father, Lord, you are our great provider, Lord God. Our provision is in your sovereignty, O Lord God. And so this morning we healed and we submit, O Lord God, these requests in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Right, at this stage, we just also want to remind our, our, our parents with the little tods. We've got a PT room on my right, your left. Um, so if the little ones become a little bit too restless, the, uh, the television on, you're not missing it. I beg your pardon, during load setting, the television is on. Um, but if you need, you know, just maybe to uh, take him or her out, you're welcome to use that space. Thank you. Um, we, I see the jammers have already been excused, um, and so we thank Norma for that. If you do have a little one, uh, age, uh, well, 12, 13, in grade 7, please join the jammers, all right? And the DNA, you know, from grade 8 and upwards, please join our DNA youth. They're dynamic, and we just trust God for great things to come. Um, yeah, awesome. And of course, the little ones, we have got kids' shirts as well. So um, we've got an awesome, fantastic team of teachers. Oh, this, uh, where's uh, Theon? I'm missing him. You know, just the song remind me when I was at uh, Sunday school, uh, Pastor Ricky, you know, just having these teachers and the songs and the stories about baby Mo cruising down the Jordan River. Hey, Amen. I mean, you know, it just takes me back, you know, so many years. I'm not going to reveal my age. But yeah, anyway. Then this morning, it is also my honor just to speak about um, the Harvest Fund that we have. We've got four ministries uh, under that umbrella. We've got missions, we've got uh, mercy, we've got uh, maintenance, and we've got um, ministries that all sits under that umbrella. And we encourage you this morning to please support that ministry. Uh, we've got um, uh, payment facilities. There's a Yoko card payment service at the back. So please do make use of that. And of course, um, we've got special envelopes. Please slip something in there, you know, and God will bless you. And so we go over to just speaking about, just before we take up the tithes and offerings, I would just like to read a um, portion of Scripture. Um, Paul, in his second letter to the church of Corinth, um, he expresses gratitude and thankfulness because the Corinthian church have supported him, um, but th things were amiss, and he writes to them, and then he starts with a statement. He says, remember in, the, in uh, 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6, he says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generous, generously will also reap generously. Now, it is common sense that if you sow a little, you can only harvest a little. But if you sow thousands and thousands of seeds, you're gonna, your harvests are going to be plentiful. You're going to have a huge harvest. You know, that, that is just common sense. Um, and so Paul draws the analogy between uh, the reaping and sowing uh, principle and he... He speaks of it in two uh, uh, contexts. The one in the natural, as I've mentioned, you know, whatever we plant. If I plant um, a lemon tree, I can only expect lemons to grow on it. You know, I cannot have uh, another citrus uh, fruit uh, like oranges or, um, as we say in Cape Town, Nazis. No, you're going to have lemons, all right? And so the same thing on the spiritual context, you know, if we invest our time, our treasure, our talent in the kingdom of God, listen to what the word says. Proverbs 11 verses 18 says, the one, now my device is not playing. All right. Proverbs 11, 18 says, the one who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. God will honor your pure heart. So, then Paul goes on in the latter verse 7 and 8 and he reminds the church of Corinth, you know, you gave. Make sure you gave willingly. Make sure you gave lovingly. And I'm paraphrasing, make sure that you don't give begrudgingly. And Father Lord, as we just commit our tithes, 
Father, Lord, as we commit the Lord God, our gifts, the Lord God, that which we have determined in our hearts, I pray a blessing upon it, the Lord God. I pray, O Lord God, that you will multiply the Lord God. Father, Lord, you know that we are trusting you, Lord God. We are experiencing tough times. Uh, we've seen the interest rates have oh, tripled up, O Lord God. And Father, Lord, it has been so tough, O Lord God, for businesses during this load setting crisis, O Lord God, coming out of COVID. But we know that we serve a God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. All the gold, all the silver, Lord God, belongs to you. And Father, Lord, we are rich in Christ Jesus, O Lord God. And so we yield and we give, O Lord God, as determined in our hearts. Bless that gift, O Lord God, to the extension of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Thank you, Asus. Please take up the tides. Thank you. Everybody, good morning, church. Um, before I start all this information, I need to share with you. Oh, I had pictures. Oh, no. Oh, no. We had pictures of our um, ladies' pizza and karaoke yesterday. I wanted to share with you who was there yesterday. Guys, we had the most incredible time. What the, all those ladies singing, what they didn't know was that I was actually auditioning them for the praise and worship team, and they all made it. We had an amazing time. Thank you to all the ladies that came out. Yay! Okay. That on the right there was um, William's wife. William, your wife can all sing, eh? And then there was um, Warren's wife, Kalisha, who sang Mr. Postman. And Warren came running in from outside to find out what postman are you singing about? Anyway, let's go on to our information that I need to share with you this morning. On Tuesday, the 9th of May at 6.45, there is a prayer and equipping session with Pastor Eric Bapital. That is open to everybody. Uh, Seniors Connect, do you remember the two, num the two things? 10 and 10. Wednesday the 10th at 10 a.m. That will be in parents and tots. Seniors, that's for you. In five years' time, I'm going to come join you, okay? Prayer chain. Terrence and the team is going to form a prayer chain on Saturday the 20th of May at 10 a.m. Right here down Retreat Road because they are wanting to pray into this community. So please speak to Barry. Barry, just say hi. We all know Barry, but please speak to Barry afterwards if you want to know more about that. But I think that will be an awesome opportunity for us to show up. The more bodies present, the more effective that prayer chain is going to be. And we need to make our presence known here in retreat and let people know that we are praying for this community. There's a special meeting on Monday the 22nd of May at 7 p.m. right here in this auditorium. That is a special invitation from Pastor Wayne to everybody to please come and join that Every Nation Retreat members meeting. There's some very important information that will be shared. And if you're uncertain of whether you should be here, volunteer, member, whoever, it is for each and every one of you. Just please come, okay? Then Victory Weekend, the week, the preparation week happens on the 24th of May at 7 p.m. That's a Wednesday. And then the weekend, the Victory Weekend happens on Friday the 2nd at 7 p.m. and Saturday the 3rd at 9 a.m. That is of June. Last and certainly not least is our Go World Conference. Now we are just about sitting on 80 people out of the 100 that we are aiming for. That is amazing, truly amazing. But we need to know that there is a set amount of people that is allowed to attend that conference. There is a set amount. So if you don't register early, the chances of you not finding a spot is very likely. So we want you, I want to encourage you this morning that if you still need to register with me and remember we are making it possible for everybody to attend by offering some payment options. Please come and chat to me at the back if you want to know more. And that is the information, guys. So I have a very special privilege right now to introduce the speaker for the day. Hmm, what shall I say about him? Um, so I know him through his beautiful wife, Gita. We are besties and we also run a studio together. So that's how I got to know Ricky. 
And he is the same person that he is here, the same person that you'll speak to in a church setting, is exactly the same person he is at home. He has a heart for the Lord and a heart for family. So please put your hands together for Pastor Enrico Ahrens. Thank you. Good morning, church. So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. To those that's online, it's really great for you guys to connect with us. But there's no place like gathering with the saints in the house of the Lord. Amen. So please enjoy the service with us online as well. And enjoy this time together. I'm always blessed to come and minister at a place that I call home. I call this place home in the week. I said to, uh, in the meetings that we were sitting, and it was such a moment that um, the words might have was said maybe a bit lightly, but, but it felt so deep in my heart. Um, I said to Pastor Wayne, I need to make an appointment because I'd love to meet with him next week. For no apparent reason, I just feel like I need to connect. And Pastor Karen came past and she said to me, a son has access to the Father. Now she said that lightly, smiled, and we laughed, but it cut me so deep and beautifully because I was raised in this home in ministry through hard and tough times in my personal life, in church world, all of that. Um, in this house, I was loved for, cared for, my family was loved for and cared for. And I want to say to you, if you've got kids um, that needs to be in kids' ministry, please, please, foundation is laid solid in this house. I'm not saying this because I'm speaking out of what I heard. My kids have been through the same process today. They serve in the house of the Lord, not because daddy asked them. I don't ask them. As pastors has got this thing. We don't ask our kids because they would feel that I must serve because mom or dad is pastors, evangelists in the house. They are serving because in this house, foundations was laid solidly. If we are family, we serve. We do things together. We do life together. And so I want to encourage you, get your kids to go to the youth. Get your kids to go to jam. Discipleship does, does have, it has no age. We don't start when we all grown up and sometimes all messed up. <laughs> Let's start when we're small and we don't have all of that to carry. Amen. So it's an honor to be here. So last week we started a bit of a, 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 a two-week series and Pastor Lazal spoke about all access and she spoke about going to all the world. And as I was watching online, I saw for the first time that the mask of Zorro was taken off. She would, she would confess on how she would play in the streets and she said when she was playing, you know, cowboys and crooks, she was called Zorro. And so <laughs> I had such a moment of, of just having a laugh. Because that is what we used to do. I'm over alone, Ranger Gewisset, and Toto, and, and all these various people that we were celebrating and watching on TV. Noah's was it Spider Man, and all these other guys that is out there, Superman, and, and, and the Avengers. But it was such a moment. But she reminds us, us of God's purposes from the beginning was to fill the earth with His glory. Come on. She reminded us that God's plan and purpose ultimately will stand. It will stand. So you can mark what you will do, whatever you want to do. At the end of the day, the purposes of God's plan shall be fulfilled. Even in the church, will the gates of hell shall not prevail against the house of the Lord. Because it's built on the rock of Jesus Christ. And she really just reminded us that we should be those people that God has called us to be, to go in all the world, be the ambassadors that God has called us to be to this world and be an ambassador of the kingdom, bring his glory, fulfill the dominion mandate and the great commission. I want to share with you just one or two stats. You know, a couple of months ago as, as I would listen to some of the statistics, they said that 
the world has reached over 8 billion people. Over 8 billion people is alive on this earth today. Of that statistic, 31.7% of them are Christians. 68.3% is lost. They are people that believe lives in different other deities and we know there's only one true God. There's no other deity that said that I am the way, the truth, and the life and no one will get to the Father except by me. And so the task at hand is big. The Great Commission is just what it is. It is great. And we need each other to fulfill this. We cannot do this in our own strength. And so this morning, I have the privilege of just talking about that second installment. And I themed my message, a global harvest. A global harvest harvest and we know this main theme is all access and we have access because of the cross of Calvary if we look at the Passover and we spoke about those various things in these times of Easter and this is the thing that sometimes hits me so deep within my heart that ultimately the sacrifice that God made through becoming Jesus Christ on, on the cross of Calvary when Jesus died, the veil tore from the top to the bottom. Now for some of us, we might miss this detail, but this is an important part because in the olden times, we only had act, we, none of us could go in there. It was only the priest that would go into the Holy of Holies once a year. He could only go to the holy place, not to the holy of holies. But Jesus Christ, the high priest that has been tested in all points just as we are, became the ultimate atonement, the veil tore from the top to the bottom. And because we are now sons and daughters of the Most High God, we have all access. We can come into the holy of holies with boldness. We have access because of Jesus and this morning, if you do not have access as yet, if you do not have that relationship with Jesus Christ as yet, if you have grown cold in somewhat way, you have come to the right place. You have tapped on the right and clicked on the right link this morning because you are going to get an opportunity of a lifetime that will change your life in this lifetime. And you will have eternal joy with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not preaching as yet. I'm just laying a foundation. So let me pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you that you are here. Thank you. Where two or three is gathered in your name, that is where you are. And this morning we thank you for the privilege and the honor that we have to be able to gather around your word, to gather around and worship and lift up the name that's above every other name. Today as I minister your word, decrease me because it's not my moment. Increase, Father. In Jesus' name, anything, any thought, that is trying to take preeminence within our mind space, within our hearts. And we, we're not saying that our situation is small, but we are saying that this moment, Father, one word from heaven can change our lives, can turn around situations. So I come against every force that is trying to take preeminence over your word this morning. And we say we bind you in the name of Jesus. We ask that the heavens will open. And a shift will happen that even our situations and circumstances will change to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this morning, we're going to go into the scripture. And you can open your Bibles to Acts 2. Right, and we're going to read from verse 1 and 4. And I'm going to go through some points in between that whole scripture of Acts 2. And then uh, we will take it a bit further from there. And so... Remember, this is this point where they are now, the disciples is gathered in one place. We're going to read verses 1 to 4. It says, when the day of Pentecost arrived, 
they were all together in one place. Let that settle in. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. They were all filled and they all spoke in different tongues. The Holy Spirit was at work and is still at work today. The Holy Spirit is still at work today. Today we will see how the Holy Spirit gives us the same power, the same mission, and the same message. Nothing has changed as we would go. Let's start by point number one, which is the same power. The same power. Right, so it says the following in Acts 2 verses 16 to 17. But this is, this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. We see here that God, here Peter gets up and he reminds the people that were standing there because they had the reference of the Old Testament scriptures and he reminds them what the prophet Joel has said at that point in time and he tells them that God, Jesus Christ, is going to pour out his spirit. He's saying this is that moment that that power of the Holy Spirit will be poured out. We see that if we go to John 14, 16 to 17, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. He says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive and it neither sees him or knows him, you know him. For he dwells with you and he will be in you. Acts 1.8 says the following. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we are called to be witnesses. A witness speaks the truth. There's only one truth that doesn't change. Truth is an absolute. Truth is a person and that person is Jesus Christ. You and I have been called to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. The truth whom is a person and not a concept. Acts 2. We see uh, Jesus pours out the Holy Spirit and the power of God is released from heaven on all those believers that was gathered, that 120 that was there. All of a sudden we see the disciples doing mighty miracles as we see the power of the Holy Spirit released. I want you to, to, to say this, good mo this morning, goodbye powerless Christianity. Goodbye, powerless Christianity. A Christian is never meant to be powerless because the spirit of the living God is in you and I. We don't walk in our own power, in our own accord, in, in our own thoughts, in our own ways. We walk in the ways of the Lord. Goodbye, powerless Christianity. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not this, this enigma, this... This, this, some people say the it and the thing and all of No, the Holy Spirit is the third part of the Godhead. Father, Son, Holy Spirit is here. 
He's with us. He gives us power so that we can reveal the son. It's not so the man or the woman of God can look great. It's not so that the disciple can be looking great. I am the one with the power. No, it's not that. It's so that the Spirit of God is there to testify about the Son and glorify the Son, and the Son glorifies the Father. It's not for us to stand there. I did this. It's not about that. If it's about that, then God forbids I must get out of the way so that God can be God. We see that at this point in time, even Paul writes, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is in you and me. I don't think you guys understand me this morning. I think sometimes your situation and circumstances, it puts you in a position where you're saying that, my God cannot do this. No, is there anything that's too hard for God? The Holy Spirit, the third part of the Godhead, is here, is moving on the earth. And if you are blood-bought, sanctified saint, then the, you have access to God. The Spirit of God dwells in you. And this morning, if the Spirit of God has not indwelled you yet, you will get an opportunity for Him to fill you. And you can experience Him for yourself. The scripture in, in, in Romans 8, 11 that Paul writes, in the time of COVID, when, when me and my family in the first wave got COVID, nobody knows nothing about the disease. And one of my friends set up a prayer network and people started praying for us. And the Lord took me to the scripture, reminded me that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in me. And he can give life to my mortal body. When nobody understood about this disease, nothing at all. In fact, this thing came walking into my home when we didn't go anywhere else. Somebody walked in just to wish my son happy birthday. And all of a sudden, this person did not know that they were carrying this. And it came in. And there it was. But my God is bigger than that. Today, all of us, we are alive. We are kicking. We are strong because we stood on the word of the Lord. God is sovereign. And even if God would have taken me, it would have been fine because my God is sovereign and he knows best. <laughs> Let me share with you some stories. And this is not me being that person. It's I want to show you if you're obedient to the spirit of God, what he can do. We in church one Sunday morning in every nation uh, and in one city, this guy come walking in and he's got a brace on his leg and he's walking in and he comes down the aisle and I'm busy going out. We are going into the second service at this point in time and he's coming to sit and the Holy Spirit says to me, lay hands on that guy's leg. I would go to him and I said to him, can I lay hands on you, on your knee and just pray for you? And the guy looked at me a bit funny and, and, and you know that awkward moment, what do I do? Do I continue to pray? I kept on praying. I left it right there, came to the front. Monday, I get a message. They said, brother, would you pray again for this person? And I asked why. They said, 10 years ago, he had an accident. And all that's been happening all these years, his meniscus was gone and bone was chafing against bone. But when we got to the doctor, the doctor took an x-ray and there's a meniscus. God did a creative miracle by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cannot put a meniscus in there. God in his power and his might, the Holy Spirit, did a creative miracle. What was gone for 10 years, God in his power restored that man. They wanted me to pray for some of the muscles. But I know that God who started a good work is able to complete it. I'm not there to heal the muscles. My God heals those muscles too. And so there's, there's many others. We a guy in the service in Mitchell's Plain. His ears he was, was closed up. And I would minister and I'm praying for some of these guys. And I come back and I, I, the Holy Spirit says, pass him by. And I said, okay, let me pass you by. I don't know why at that point. And I go to the next person. And as I come back, you know, <laughs> one of the guys get up. He's deaf. I said, okay. 
And I said, okay, let's, 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 let's come forward, brother. Come a bit forward. And I put my hands on his ears and I said, Holy Spirit, open up his ears. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare this ears open. The ears open. And I looked at the guy. And I said, can you hear me? And he said, yes. And then I took the mic away. And then I moved out of his eyesight because I know a deaf person can read lips very well. And I moved out of his eyesight and I asked, can you hear me? And he said, yes. And I walked to the other side and he said, yes. And our Father in heaven was glorified as the Spirit of God would move. No, no, I come out the eyesight, man. So I know, I've been trained in this house, every opportunity is an opportunity. I remembered that you have to share the gospel. And as I would get, stand in front of this guy, because all of this time, as an evangelist, I was preaching the gospel with fire in my heart, because I'm fully convinced, and I realized you were sitting there, and you did not hear and understand a thing. Hey, and I said to him immediately, brother, now that you can hear, can I tell you about the one that healed you? And he said to me, yes. And I said to him, let me tell you about Jesus that has opened up your ears, the healer. I asked him, now do you want to receive Jesus? And he said, yes. Come on. The greater miracle is what that the man the name is written in the Lamb's book of life. The miracles, the signs and the wonders, the same power that was in Christ Jesus, that spirit that raised is in you. As a disciple, you have to walk in the power. And here's the thing. The miracles that will happen as you lay hands on the seat is the dinner bell to preach the gospel. You know, when the dinner bell rings in the old times, then everybody would come around the table and have supper. They have lunch together, whatever it is. Now, when the dinner bell is rang and the person would have an encounter with the Lord, immediately minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the bigger miracle is that you as a person's name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. You and I have access. We have access to the Holy Spirit. We have got access to the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Now you might say that, you know, is this for some? I want you to know that if you'd read scripture, you'd see it was the disciples. The great commission was given to the disciples. The miraculous things that was performed was through the disciples. You and I are disciples of the most high God. Do we have disciples in the house? How many bang we see? And some of you might think that this is only, you know, you talk signs and wonders. It's only for the pastors. It's only for the evangelists, the apostles, and the teachers. No. I didn't start off here. I started off just as a normal disciple, which I still am. I'm not about the title. There's a place for that. But as a normal disciple, I was still working within the military. I would lay hands on the sick. I was working at the campus as a lecturer, and I was laying hands on, and then God healed him. It's not in the title. It's not in my name. It's in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's not just for some of us. The gifts of the Holy Spirit is there for all of us and we can enjoy that same power and see God be glorified as we administer the gospel. So, Catherine Kuhlman, an evangelist that operated in signs and wonders, she said the following, God is not looking for gold vessels or silver vessels. He's looking for a willing and a yielded vessel. Are you willing to be that willing and yielded vessel so that God can use you for his glory. The next point is the same message. We have the same power and yes, we have the same message. Acts 2.38 says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
the message of the Messiah. The gospel is not something that only came to this time, to, to a place, that point in history when the gospels was being written, when Jesus was walking. No, if you'd go further back into the scriptures, you'll see that in the Old Testament, they were looking for the Messiah. They were looking for when is this Messiah coming? Because there's something that we would call within the, the evangelism world and in, in, in theology, they say the proto-evangelium. And this is in Genesis 3.15 already. The proto, the first time, protos is the first, and evangelium is the good news. And here's that point in 3.15, and the Bible says that I will put enmity between you and the woman and between the offspring and her offspring, and she shall, and he, Jesus, shall bruise your head, and you shall be, shall bruise his heel. Jesus Christ was the one that was spoken about at that point in time already. In the beginning, God had a plan that a Messiah is going to come. And you can go and you can read through all the prophets. You can read through the Psalms. You can read through all of that. And you'll find that they are pointing towards the Messiah. All the time, the cross that was coming, they didn't know it was going to be a cross. All that you see is that he will come and he will be Dying on the cross. And you can see that progression as you get to Isaiah and, and, and those kind of scriptures, those prophecies, even in the book of Psalm. That's why the Samaritan woman understanding her time, that when she had an encounter with Jesus, she said, I'm, she goes into the town. I found this man that told me everything about me. And you know what she asked afterwards? Leander, she, can this be the Messiah? Because she understood that there was a search for the Messiah at this point in time like never ever before. We are there. We need the Messiah. We need Jesus Christ. The message will never change. The gospel is the power. Not the power that you will be in presenting so eloquently. I've seen how I present the gospel so clear. And I would go through all the various scriptures. And nobody gets saved sometimes. Because I thought it was in the way that I would eloquently come in with those words. But then I got to places where I walked away from there and I said, wow, what happened now? Did a miserable presentation of the gospel, clear to all the points, but I found that I could have done better. And then this person would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And then the Holy Spirit just convicted me. It's not in your presentation. The gospel and the gospel is the power unto salvation. The gospel is enough. It doesn't need my additives to make the story sound more real in this point in time. No, the gospel message will stay the same wherever we go. We're never in a place where we say that I marry, marry methods. You know, sometimes we use various methods as we would go and preach the gospel. Some facts and things that I'll see through scripture that the moment the gospel is preached, signs and wonders follows. Let's go read the book of Acts. Go read the book of Acts. Guys like Reinhard Bonke would come out and he said, in front of him in Nigeria, there's a million plus people standing and you'd start preaching the gospel, but you'd stand there. Before he prays for the sick, he preaches the gospel. Because you understand the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As we go, the gospel is for every person, every culture, in every nation, and it is for every generation. We use the methods to engage culture and communities to share the gospel, to share about his sinless life, his perfect death, and the powerful resurrection. We need to preach Christ crucified. You see, methods may change, but the message will never change. Marry the gospel, not the method. Because the gospel message is the power unto salvation for those who believe. Here is the thing, the last point. The same mission. The mission has not changed. Acts 2.39 says, For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Saying that this gospel message of repentance is a message that is cross-generational. 
It's not only for some. It's across every generation that if Jesus didn't come yet, we stay faithful to the preaching of the gospel message of Jesus Christ. The Great Commission is truly what it is to go into all the world and make disciples. The Great Commission is great. It will not be fulfilled by one person, one organization, one church. God has called the entire church, lest we be prideful as a human being, lest we be prideful as a single church body, and lest we be prideful as an organization. We cannot do this on our own. The Great Commission is truly great. And we need each other to fulfill this Great Commission. Yes, sometimes you'll be the only woman and the only guy that will stand up in your workplace, on your campus. But you and God is the majority. As churches, we need to hold hands to fulfill the purposes of God. To fulfill the kingdom mandate to bring his kingdom kingdom and his glory on earth the great commission was given to disciples we are not to stop the preaching of the gospel until the whole world knows and believe in him we are not alone christ is with us until the end of age i want us to get to this last part it says so simple here The Great Commission is not an option to be considered. It is a command to be obeyed. And this is said by Hudson Taylor, a guy that would go into China and see millions of people coming to Jesus Christ. He would leave the comfort of his home and he would go to China, a communist nation that did not allow any form of Christianity to penetrate. Hudson Taylor would go in there faithfully, share the gospel underground, teach these guys how to share the gospel, and all of a sudden China experienced a revival. Come on. This is the power of the gospel. It's not in one of us. The spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is in all of us. If you're a believer and you're a disciple, Jesus Christ, and he's filled you with his power and his spirit, you and I have never been called to just be comfortable. We've been called to be uncomfortable. Picture this last thing. Thank you. As we're coming to an end. Picture this last part. Picture a building on fire. Picture everybody as running from the top floor. They're running down the stairs and they're running out of this building and everybody is in fear. Picture Nobody going into that house that's on fire, to that building that's on fire. Everybody is running far off because this building is going to collapse. In this world today, there are places that's on fire. And I'm not talking about a Holy Ghost fire. People that is toes is dangling over the fires of hell. You see, when peace steps in is when that alarm or that, or that, that <laughs> I don't want to say anything. Let me say this. When the sirens goes off and you hear them come and they pull up on the side of the road and these firemen would run into the fire. As a believer, as a disciple, you and I have been called to be like that fireman, to run into that building. You know what? It's not saying that I'm not afraid. It's saying that because of the lost souls that is in that building that is going to die and go to hell, I will put myself in harm's way so that God can save some. You and I are meant to bring that peace. In that turmoil, you and I are meant to come with that rivers of living waters flowing from our belly and put that fires out because we take dominion over those situations. It's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Can we stand? You know, this morning as we As we hear this, there's a great world that is out there. There is, you know, we spoke about that 68.3% of the world that doesn't know Jesus. 
And these people includes your family. It includes our friends. It includes a lot of people, that people that doesn't know Jesus. And so sometimes when we read the statistics, we read it like it's out there. It is right here. It includes South Africa. It includes your family. It includes your household. Disciples makes disciples. Found people finds people. This morning, I feel the Lord is calling me to bring this church that is making disciples already and to say that come to attention. There is a greater whole place that your level of making disciples is great, but I'm taking you higher. Every seat shall be filled within this house. There will not be enough capacity. In fact, Pastor Wayne, that's going to be a good problem that we're going to have. To see this church filled, bloomed, second service that will come. Volunteers that will be raised up. You know why? Because you and I has gotten up and say, yeah, I am, Lord. Send me. Same power. Same message. Same mission. We will go. We will go for you. But some of us, we might be sitting here and we say, Brother Ziprat, so fervently, you're talking about Jesus Christ. You might be listening online or somewhere along the line when you receive this message. You might be listening and you're saying that you're talking about this house that's on fire. Brother, that's me. I'm in that house. That house is burning down. I don't know what's going to happen to my soul. I hear that Jesus Christ came and he died on the cross for my sins. It's not the first time that I hear. It's not the second time. But this morning, if you hear and you feel, Feel God doing something in your heart. You are in the right place. God in his mercy set us up so that you can come to get to know him as your Lord and Savior. Some of you might be sitting in this place and saying that I'm in a place where I've grown cold. Brother, the situations, life has brought me to a place that is dark. I was in the light, but somewhat way. You see, God is not moved. You and I are the ones that move. But God's hand is not too short to save. His ear is not too dull to hear. And this morning, if you dare to call out to him, he will save you. This morning, if you never ever made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, today is your day. Christ died and he became sin. For our behalf, a great exchange, our unrighteousness for his righteousness, our unjustness for his justness. If this is you and you know for a fact that you have never ever made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, today is your day. I don't care if you're 5, 22 years old, but if you feel the Spirit of God moving right now, this is your opportunity. Would you be bold enough to say that, yeah, I am. I've never ever made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. I want to come to Him. If you are a believer, I want you to just pray. Because there's a, there's a whole fear that goes on for every person's soul. If you never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, would you just raise your hand? And say, I want to come to Him. I want to step into a relationship with Him. I want to make Him my Lord and my Savior. I've been coming to church, but it's not enough. I know I'm not right with Him. If that is you, just raise your hand. Right there where you're at. The Lord sees you. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is at work right now. It's not me. I cannot save, convert, convict, or convince any man. But the Holy Spirit, He's doing that right now. If you're a backslider, this is family. And you want to come back to Jesus. Would you raise your hand? Say, you know what? That's me, brother. That's me. I've tried. There's one. I see that hand, my brother. It's two. That is being real. 
That is being real with yourself and real with your maker. We cannot afford to let this moment pass us by, but I cannot. step out and say, yeah, I am. Come on, can we put our hands together? All of heaven is celebrating as one sinner comes to repentance. Come on. Praise God. Praise God. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are our God. Like the thief on the cross. That's it, Father, today. If you in your place, Jesus, if you there, remember me. He did nothing. He was a sinner. And he believed and he called upon Jesus. And that night he ended into heaven. I'm going to pray for these guys. And if you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. If you are in the, in the crowd, if you are in the church. And you're praying this prayer for the first time or the second time. That you know that where you find yourself. We're going to pray. But I want you to be bold enough to come and step out and speak to some of our leaders. And we'll be willing to just chat with you, to connect you to somebody that can help you grow. Amen. My brother and my sister, today you've done the best thing that you could have done. To come to Jesus. To recommit your lives. To come to Him and say that, yeah, I am. So I'm going to ask you guys just to pray with me. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So just pray with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I thank you for what you've done for me on the cross. Thank you that you saved my soul. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. And I commit my life to you. I receive you as your Lord, as my Lord, and as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me pray for you guys. Father, I thank you for this sister and brother that stands before you today. I pray that you'd seal them with the seal of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Father God, that nothing will be able to pull them away from you, oh Father. That you would touch them. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for their lives. Heaven is celebrating. And therefore, we will celebrate what you have done today. In Jesus' name, amen. My brother and my sister, behind you, there's somebody that just want to spend a moment with you. If you guys have your bags or your stuff still, still in, this, in the auditorium, please go and get it. And they just want to spend some time ministering to you guys and tell you a bit more about the next step that you have. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a good time and a good Sunday. Today you are saved. Names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you guys can just follow on that side. And uh, for those that's family of these guys, they're just going to be about five or ten minutes. Just a moment that they're going to learn a bit more about what God is doing. Secondly, those people that's in the house, if you've got sickness within your body, if you've got any sickness in your body, we want to pray for you quickly. I want you... To put your hand on that body part right now. It's not about me. The Holy Spirit is going to heal you. Right? Huh? Put your hand in. I want you to put your hand on that body part. Put your hand on that place of that ache and that pain. Right? Huh? Put, your place, put your hand in. We're going to trust God to heal. To heal. Father, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you said signs and wonders is our portion. It will follow us 
And so, Lord, we thank you that, Lord, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. I speak healing over every infirmity in every person's body. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare and decree that they are healed. We speak to every sickness. We say, be gone. We cast them into the fiery pit of hell. We pray for your kingdom to come within their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, into every joint of Father God. Heal. Every artery, open up. Every heart disease, we speak to you. That heart will pound like it never has pounded before. We thank you, Jesus, for complete healing. Muscles, we speak to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Lower back, oh, be healed. Chronic lower back pain, be healed in the name of Jesus. We thank you for that healing. Jesus' name. For those of you that is trusting God and you heard about this power and you want to experience a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, right there where you're at. Just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. If you trusting God for fresh indwelling of the Holy Spirit lift up your hands if you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit and you yearn for the Spirit of God to fill you Just lift up your hands. Sometimes it was the laying on of hands. Other times the gospel was preached in the house of Cornelius and the Holy Spirit filled everybody. It can happen again because Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you that you are here. Your scripture says that if our earthly fathers knows how to give good gifts, how much more? Not you, our heavenly father, know how to give good gifts. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for those that are standing here that has never experienced an indwelling of your Holy Spirit, Fill them right now. My signs of speaking in tongues for the first time. May it come in the mighty name of Jesus. May come, come Lord. May from the bellies, may they flow rivers of loving waters. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, for those that is yearning for a fresh touch. In Acts 4, we saw the disciples asking, fill us again. Father, fill your people again. May they speak your word with boldness like never before. Because it's the gospel, the word that will transform lives. Not information, but the truth of God's word. Give them boldness. Oh, Holy Spirit, fill them. Oh. Fill your children with a good gift of your spirit right now right now right now right now in Jesus name church just receive the Holy Spirit receive 
don't resist if you're feeling some warmth within your hands or even deep within your core just receive if you feel sometimes there's a bit of jitteriness within your body it's okay let the spirit of God do his work do his work within you if you see a vision if you seeing stuff in the spirit that you've never seen if you're experiencing a peace that you do not understand it's the peace of God just receive thank you thank you Holy Spirit thank you that you are moving in this auditorium a wave ministering to your people Jesus demons flee gone in Jesus name out of the homes you don't belong there the child of God is coming home the light of God is coming into a place and the atmosphere has to shift thank you that your presence is not just to remain within us but it's going to flow into our homes, into our workplaces, our school and our campuses. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you glory. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. And the church of God says, Amen. Can we give God a wonderful hand? Amen. Thank you, Ricky. Wonderful worship, a communion, just a word in season for our hearts. Just remember that next week is Mother's Day. So the children will be with us and also the youth. And so we're just going to have a special time uh, in the presence of God. Can you just lift up your hands? May the Holy Spirit, may your peace, O oh Father, that surpasses all understanding, will guard our minds and our hearts and our soul and may the love of God be shed abroad in our hearts so that we can love the unlovable and may the power of the Holy Spirit dwell within us for us to be able to proclaim this good news and to remain faithful to this mission both now and forevermore in Jesus name Amen. May you have a wonderful day. May God bless you. Amen. Lift you high